good morning. I'm just off Clifton Street, um, off the Crumlin Road, and behind this wall lies one of the major historical sites in Belfast, and it is Clifton Street Cemetery. The cemetery was opened, uh, I think it was 1797, and they put a big high wall, it was a, a, a cemetery that was supposed to, uh, the idea behind it was to give a place of rest for the, the victims of the poor house. But actually, uh, as, long, as well as, as people from the poor house, we have uh, quite rich people inhabiting uh, the graves in the cemetery. Um, so there's, there's uh, the graves of the rich and the graves of the poor. You'll note the high wall around the cemetery here. This was to keep, this was actually to keep grave robbers out, the, the Burke and Hur type people, um, because they were, they, were, they were digging up bodies and I don't know what they were using them for, medical investigations, I don't know, selling them on. And here's the uh, information board about it. And quite a few famous people uh, are buried in this uh, cemetery. Um, what does it say? Clifton Street, 1797, new burying ground for the citizens of Belfast. Uh, and it was created largely as a way of raising money for the Belfast Charitable Society uh, to provide graves for paupers. Um, many intriguing stories as regards the graves here. And this place was protected by guys with shotguns. Uh, they, were, they were using the, the bodies for dissection purposes. Uh, famous uh, people associated with the cemetery, Henry Joy McCracken you know, of the 1798 Rebellion, Presbyterian United Irishman, and his sister, Mary Ann, are in here. The Ritchie family. Uh, the Yurt family. Um, and you get in by appointment. So you just can't walk in. I have managed to get myself inside <clears throat> the remarkable, the fascinating, the very private Clifton Street Cemetery in Belfast here. And the place is just coming down with history. Coming down with history. There's Yurts, Yurts in here, there's Richies in here, there's Andrews in here, and there's just there's just too many for me to even catalogue. And then there's uh, the United Irishmen. Um, there's about four or five of them, and uh, these were Presbyterians actually who were founding members of the uh, United Irishmen. And you come across some uh, wee quirky, quirky graves here. Young moulders here, is not good. And as well as being a graveyard, this, this is actually a wildlife sanctuary because I've heard so many different birds singing in here and I would recognise the names of, of these birds. And the rich and the famous of that particular time are buried in here. There's a, a, a reverence and doctors and, and, and all sorts. In here, Reverend Andrew Art, uh, the well-to-do. They, uh, they got uh, great uh, grave headings and plaques.
and those uh, those folks who had no money and nowhere to bury them were buried in here as well. And this this stone here, erected in the middle of um, Clifton Street Cemetery, is laid there to remember and honour the women, men, women and children from the poor house. There are literally thousands of people in this sort of uh, mound area in the graveyard. They, as I said, the rich were buried alongside the poor and uh, these people just couldn't afford um, to have headstones or individual graves and it says in this ground lie the remains of several thousand poor they all had names and this top wall of the graveyard is significant too because the, this is a double wall and in between the two walls the children of the poor house were buried. They, they, their parents obviously had no money to bury them and they were put in between the two walls and uh, that's where they ended up. So this is Clifton Street uh, Cemetery. Last burial I think that took place was 1995. And there's this top part of the cemetery, and then there's the lower part. And unfortunately it has to be uh, kept locked, because um, vandals and, and people would come in and just wreck the place. And this is the wall that separates the uh, top part of the cemetery with the bottom part. And if you want to get into the cemetery to have a wee Jeff Duke about the place, uh, you apply to, you, you ring the Belfast City Council and one of their wardens, one of their park wardens, will give you uh, uh, a key and you can get in. Or they'll, they'll let you in and then you ring them up to get yourself out again. Because uh, you never climb out of here. The walls are so high. And here's a headstone that tells you all about the body snatching that uh, used to used to take place. Uh, the graveyard uh, was was uh, opened, I think, in, in and around 1797. So Burke and her were running about at that stage. I'll just pan uh, pan down it very slowly so that you can pause it and read it if you can. This wall here is about 14 feet high and it's uh, about 3 foot thick and it goes right the way around. They, they put patrol men uh, with shotguns around the walls and uh, tried to safeguard the graves and another tactic that they used was to put a grave guard around the coffin as they lowered the coffin in and that grave guard uh, had spikes on it and it was metal and therefore uh, it protected the uh, the bodies and here is the grave of the yurt family and this grave was last used if i can step on it if you can read that was last used in 1995 and there are a stack of yurts in here. They were big into uh, uh, linen and, and uh, all that stuff. The yurt family. Famous Belfast uh, weaving family. Another famous uh, Belfast founding family 
uh, John Ritchie, shipbuilder who died 1828 to 877, for the Ritchie family and their grave. Just can't quite read that. And this grave here is a wee bit special too because it's the grave of the uh, Dunvilles. If you um, <clears throat> think of Dunville Stadium or Dunville Park, uh, John Dunville. And there's the write up about him 1786 to 1851. There we are, the Dunville family. And uh, lying before me is probably the most well-known uh, grave in the graveyard. It's the grave of Henry Joy McCracken. Born August 1787, executed 1798. No, born 1767, executed 1798. So that would have made him uh, 31 years old. And I think his sister is in here too. Mary Ann McCracken, who is actually famous in her own right, beloved sister of Henry Joy McCracken, born 1770, wept, her, wept by her brother, uh, brothers, and she died 1866. Uh, it says here on the blue plaque, erected to commemorate the bicentenary of the founding of the Belfast Society of United Irishmen. Well, there you are now. <laughs> the United Irish men, the leading figures, were all Presbyterians, and Wolf Tone was a Presbyterian, uh, son of a Presbyterian minister, and they fought against the English, and they lost their lives, many of them, uh, in uh, quite a nasty way, uh, because they revolted against the English. Um, and they were known as dissenters, and they they linked up with Catholics and Methodists who weren't allowed to have the vote. Uh, it was only the Church of Ireland and the um, Crown forces were allowed to have the vote. If you didn't have money, you didn't have the vote. And I've just found the grave of another uh, leading figure in the United Irishmen movement. Uh, William Steele Dixon, patriot, preacher, historian, born Carn Money, 1744, died at Belfast, 27th of December, 1824. So he survived the uh, the rebellion and the massacres that took place during it. I'm trying to pick up this uh, this writing about him. A lot of these guys actually died in poverty. So this is the Reverend William uh, Dixon Steele. Penniless, he spent the next few years in Munster and Keady, our minister of Keady Presbyterian Church. Um, he died a pauper. And this grave is of particular significance. This is the grave of William Drennan, MD, born 1754, died 1820. And this man, this man was the founder of the United Irishmen. And this man also coined the phrase, the Emerald Isle. So there you are now. Uh, he was uh, uh, in, the, in the rebellion, William Drennan. And uh, Wolf's Tone, yes, he was, he was right up there. But this was the main man, William Drennan. And this is his grave. And I'm in uh, Clifton Street Poor House, and here is the actual gun that the guys over in Clifton Street Cemetery used. And these were guards on the graves because in, at that time there was a lot of grave robbing going on, and they had to assign guards at Clifton Street uh, Cemetery. Um, and very often um, the guards got drunk and 
they, they, they had to uh, remove the guards because uh, one night they fired shots at each other, thinking each other was a grave robber. So, and in Clifton Street uh, graveyard, you'll actually come across the, uh, the grave guards as well, which were metal um, uh, frameworks built over the graves to stop people uh, taking the bodies for medical purposes. So this is the old gun that the, uh, the uh, grave guards had. My goodness, there's history for you.